All right. Um, so if y'all don't know me, my name's Ian. Um, I've been going to Awaken um, for almost three years. Um, and then um, that, back then the youth was on Thursdays. And so when I played football, I wasn't able to make it on Wednesdays. And so there's actually a photo that I have from my first midweek. Um, I want a pair of AirPods. Um, and so um, so today's message, is, I, you know, to us is pretty special, but not because like me and Joshua up here, but because like what we're going to talk about, I think is really important. Um, and so I don't know if you're like forced to come here. Like I was when I first started coming here, I was, had, um, was brought here by my mom and my brother and I didn't really want to come. Obviously now I want to come, I drive. So I, I come here every week um, by my own free will. And so whether you're like forced to be here or you choose to be here, like I'm glad that you're here because it's a special, um, a special message. Um, and so um, like Daniel said, like we're just going to be talking about um, our, some advice and Hopefully, some some uh, wisdom from our, our times in middle school and then in high school, and hopefully, I'll take something away and um, learn something I guess about us. But um, so I'll pray, and then we'll get into it. Um, dear Lord, thanks so much for today, um, just bringing us over here today. Um, thank you for this opportunity that me and Joshua have um, to share some wisdom, and I pray that um, you know what we have to say can touch the hearts of the people listening. Um, and I uh, thank you for this. And uh, Amen. I'm so much. All right, or you first. Uh, so, uh, I guess in middle school, um, you know, middle school was a, I guess, awkward time in life. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, everybody like, like, you know, lies you, it's pretty awkward, I know, uh, I guess, uh, you know, middle school is just weird, but I guess it's when... Like, if you're here in middle school, like, you come to youth group, like, that's better than, like, what I did, because I didn't go to youth group at all in middle school. I, I didn't come to youth group at all until I was, like, until I was a sophomore. So, um, if you're here in middle school, just take that as, like, an advantage, like, that you can, ha you have, like, a good community, people to talk to, and because a lot of things happen, like, when you start going into high school and stuff, you just prepare for all that. And, yeah. Um... um. So yeah, so um, in seventh grade, um, my family started going to North Point Church, which is in uh, Cedar Park, um, and, and they are a much larger church than Awaken, um, and so like their youth group was set up, um, how they had like, for when I was in seventh grade, they had guys, they had like two or three groups of, of uh, seventh grade guys, um, and so it was really difficult to have like a relationship with everybody there, and so like that's what's so great about having a, being in a smaller youth group, um, like, you know, I didn't, might not know everybody personally, but I know who you are. And so um, just being there was just tough. Like I, it's in Cedar Park. And so a lot of the kids that, that go there are from Vista, Vista Ridge High School. And so I obviously went to, to Round Rock High School. And so I didn't know a lot of kids. And so I, I struggled with um, like creating friendships and relationships with them. Um, and that kind of affected my relationship with God too, because I didn't have a desire to like attend that youth or um, attend um, church just because it wasn't something that I looked forward to every week. Um, because obviously like I was only going there um, just because it was fun but it you know there wasn't you know a good reason for me to go there like I'm coming here now because I have people to, to um to see every week and I'm excited to learn you know, whoever's speaking whether it's Danny or not um, and so having a community of people um, with the same like mindset as you is very important um, and so like that's why I come each and every week uh, just because you know once I started coming to Awaken like I, I realized like you know Church isn't, isn't the building, but it's the people. And so, um, you know, I've created, uh, built relationships with um, the leaders, Daniel and Steve, um, you know, back when I started coming here. Um, and so, um, you know, that's, you know, what gave me uh, motivation to come uh, back like each and every week. Um, and so um, I have um, one, that one photo. Nice. Yeah, so that one. So back when um, this was two years ago, before um, before camp, so probably literally two years ago, um, around the same time, and there was only like about you know five or six of us there. Um, and so what's so great is like you know even now we have maybe like twenty people. Um, you know back then we had six. Some days we'll have you know thirty people, forty people, whatever it is. Like you know coming here, I, I kind of realized like it's like I said like it's it's no longer like the building, but it's the people. And so. Um, you know, surrounding yourself with people who have like the same goal as you um, just kind of gives you motivation to, to build your relationship with, with God. Um, 
And so like pressing into to youth and wanting to come be, uh, like back each and every week um, only grows your relationship with Jesus. All right, so underclassmen, so like sophomores and uh, fr- yeah, freshmen and sophomore. Um, that's when I started coming to youth. Like I, I came to youth when I was a sophomore, and I thought it was a uh, <laughs> no. I did not want to be here, yo. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I thought it was the uh, first time I came was during a color war. I didn't. I didn't really want to be here. I was like, it was lame. I kind of was forced to come here, but. I kept coming, like I thought it was fun, and I, I didn't really think nothing of it, but then it starts to have like a big impact on your life because you have more community people to talk to about stuff that you wish you had in middle school and had stuff like going into high school. Because going into high school, it's like a big part of people's lives. Like it could change you, like really, like it changed you like a lot. And just to have people there with you and to help you and to guide you towards that and to just help you with that, like, and like, yeah, just that stuff. And, uh, and to, you know, start, your, like, your journey, like, to find Christ. And, uh, I mean, it doesn't get easy, but uh, it just gets harder. But that's when you got to lock in, you know? Yeah, you lock in. Um, so, yeah, so finding um, who you are um, is really important. I didn't really find out, you know, my identity. Um, and so I gave my life to Christ. Um and uh and during covid um and so um i think it's it's something really important to um you know to learn and understand like um like how god sees you and, and um you know who he says you are um, and so i have a uh, verse um john chapter 1 verse 12 um, but to all who did receive him who believed in his name he gave the right to become children of god um so faith in him gives us our ident- identity um you know, like you've heard people say um, like you become who you surround yourself with. Um, and so it's really important to surround yourself with people who strive for the same goal as you. And so, you know, I started, you know, for a couple of examples, like I started hanging out with people who golf and I started golfing and I started hanging out with people who drink. Um, and I started drinking. Um, so, it, you know, very easy to become like the people you surround yourself with. Um, and so just like it's easy to, to start sinning when you're around sin, it's easy to become uh, more Christ-like when you're around, you know, people who are like Christ. And so I'm um, just surrounding yourself with people, um, you know, in this youth group, or just, you know, people at your school that are Christians um, really, you know, grows your relationship, um, you know, when they have the same, the same goal in mind and the same um, desire to, to want to know him more. And so um, that's just why it's so important being here each and every week um, and just surrounding yourself with um, you know, Christian people. All right, yeah. So now upperclassmen, that's kind of like, that's when I... Uh, uh, I believe yeah, that's like when I think like I got saved because, well, yeah, that's why I got saved because like I stopped hanging around those people like that I was hanging around because like now they like yeah, they they do a lot of stuff and I just didn't like see myself doing all that same stuff and because like I'm going on like when you leave high school is like that's when like you're in the real world and you're, like you can't keep doing the stuff that you do in high school in the real world like. I know some of my old friends that graduated, they're still doing like the same stuff like they're in high school. And that's not going to cut it. It's not going to uh, put you in a good place in life. And I feel like Christ can help you like find out what your, what your calling is in life and to help you just to get through that hard struggle of finding out like who you're going to be and just like your identity, like digging is it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> And I guess it's like a trust thing because it's really hard to trust something that you've never seen or heard of. But like, uh, yeah, uh, but like, what is it? Dang it. Uh, <laughs> but like, you can. It's not like a. It's like it's like a feeling thing. Like you just know, and like you can feel like the results. Like. That you're not like you're not like wanting to go out with the like want to hang out with those people anymore. Like you just want to, you just want to invite those people to like youth group and stuff like that. But yeah, um, yeah for for um, I don't say. So yeah, for uh, for upperclassmen, um, I mean, for most of like everybody's heard about you know or heard the saying like to not just talk the talk but to walk the walk, and so. Um, I think it's definitely easier, um, easier said than done. And 
personally, like for years, like I always, um, you know, professed to be a Christian and, you know, just, you know, said that I followed Jesus, but the things that I, I, you know, did didn't reflect that. And so, um, you know, it's, it's, it's important to, um, like I said, like not just talk the talk because, um, you know, we shouldn't like being Christians, um, we shouldn't only profess our, our faith with our tongues, but with the actions in our lives. And so, um, like, you know, Jesha was saying, hanging around those people, like want them to bring them to church. And so like those people that might not, um, you know, go to church, you know, our actions reflect, you know, the love of Jesus. And so, um, you know, if they've never, if something, you know, you have a friend that's never been to church, um, and you know, y'all both, whatever, you know, party or, or do different stuff that, you know, you shouldn't be doing. And, and they see you who, you know, say that you're a Christian, but you still do those things. Like it's not, or that's not, um, demonstrating, you know, the love of Jesus. And so that, that's something that I still struggle with too. It's, um, you know, different stuff. And, um, you know, when they're, um, you know, might be falling into sin, it's, it's tough to, to not, um, you know, follow them or it's tough to, tough to not follow them. Um, you know, if you see them as a friend and so, um, just demonstrating different things like, uh, you know, if they might be, you know, in a, you know, path of, of drinking or whatever it is, like not, maybe not, you know, hanging out with them when they're doing that stuff and just demonstrating that, like, you know, that's not, um, something that a Christian would do. And so one thing that I have is a bunch of like, what would Jesus do bracelets? Um, and so, like I said, like when you profess, um, your faith, um, you know, with your tongue, like you kind of think when you see, you know, whatever, like if people are in an altercation or whatever, like what would Jesus do in that situation and, and step in and stop those people? Um, and so, you know, just reminding yourself what, um, you know, what would Jesus do and just walking like Jesus walked in different situations. That is the one thing. All right. Yeah. The second one. Oh, uh, yeah. Right. Oh, the second one. It's the, oh, the third one. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's the same thing. Okay. Yeah. So if I had one thing to tell y'all before, like, I leave, because uh, it would be to, to just to just trust. Because even though it might not like be easy or anything, and it's not going to get easier. It's just going to get harder because temptation just gets harder and harder. The more like you get into being a believer and just uh, putting more trust into God, it's just going to get harder. But just know like, like get people around you like Gary, Paul, Daniel, Steve, Karen, Miss Stephanie, like to help you through all that stuff because they've been this, through the same path that you're going down as well. And like... Yeah, they just, yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah, like pressing into like the youth group um, and then church, you know, only makes you a better person. Like personally, I don't think there's any cons of going to church. Um, and so like, you know, making church a party, you know, might be a difficult choice at first. I know, you know, Jeshua didn't want to come to you just like me. Like it's, it's you know, a difficult choice to like want to devote your, your Wednesday nights, your Sunday mornings, you know, waking up early to go to church. Um, but to me, it's, you know, the greatest choice I ever made. Um, and, you know, so now, like I said, like I, I drive myself to youth and I drive myself to church. So it's no longer, a, um, something that I have to do, but it's something that I want to do and choose to do. Um, and so like over these three years, I've learned a lot, um, you know, how to read my Bible. I still struggle with reading my Bible, how to care for people um, that are around me. I still struggle with doing that. Um, but I definitely learned, um, a lot through that. Um, and so, you know, like Joshua said, like being, you know, a Christian isn't easy. It doesn't get easier when you give your life to Christ. You know, I think it actually gets harder um, because, you know, you start becoming more aware of your, of the, the sins that you're committing. And so committing, uh, committing to relationship with Jesus, um, you know, isn't easy. You're going to mess up. I um, mean, you know, I think it's just great that like knowing, like no matter what you do, like Jesus still loves you. Like it's hard to comprehend, you know, the things, you know, turning away from him and, and, you know, he still loves me. And so, um, yeah, like one thing, I guess, um, to take away, um, is, you know, I've been going to this youth for three years. Um, and you know, not that I took it for granted, but, or not that I didn't take it for granted, but I, you know, didn't come each and every week with a, you know, open heart and wanting to, to learn like, you know, in the beginning, like I said, like I was forced to come here. And so I would come and, you know, you know, have fun. We used to play kickball. Um, and so one thing I want, like everyone here, whether you're, you know, Elijah's age or, 
you know, Hannah's age, about to graduate, um, you know, like coming back each and every week is something that's like, you know, it's amazing. Like I, you know, only have me and just only have, you know, a month left. Um, and so, you know, coming back each and every week is just, you know, it's a blessing. And so, um, just try to make sure you're here, like every chance you get, um, you know, I'm going to be gone. So it's not like I want, like, you know, it's kind of yeah. sad to think about, but, um, you know, yeah, coming back each and every week. Um, and you know, maybe, you know, five years from now, Elijah's going to be up here sharing messages like this. Um, and so, you know, I've, over these years, you know, I've, I've built my life, my, uh, my, my relationship with Jesus, um, and just trusting in him and, and knowing that, you know, each and every week I'm, you know, growing my relationship with him. And so just coming back each and every week is something that's, you know, I wish I could be coming here, you know, every week, you know, for a few more years, but obviously, you know, I can't. So, um, yeah, just coming back each and every week is definitely something I want to advise how to give y'all. Yeah. And, uh, one thing to do this summer, uh, the, the phrase, I mean, Ian came up with, Ian actually thought about it is lock in and dig deep. I said that. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, walk well, in, dig deep, y'all. All right, but let's end this in uh, prayer, y'all. Um, all right. Uh, bow your head, Elijah. <clears throat> uh, thank you, Lord Jesus, for having us here today to talk about you and to just uh, spread your knowledge and just your word to them and to, te to teach them how to follow you and to help and to help them learn more about you and to that, that telling them that you know, following you is not easy. It's, uh, it's hard. It's going to be hard. It's never going to get easy, but just trust. Uh, so yeah, Ian, do you have anything else to say? Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Uh, give him a round of applause. <laughs>